I'm exhausted. And I still have one more day of work left. Tomorrow I actually have a day off, so tomorrow you're actually going to be getting the raw video I was supposed to do tonight. But I got back later than I was thinking I would get back. So, because of that, I'm going to make Raw's video tomorrow so I can devote more time to it. Now, this will be a very unique way for me doing NXT. Normally we talk about the match like in depth and then we go through my opinions on the show. Well, I'm somewhat doing that tonight, but not exactly. I'm going to say that I actually watched this edition of NXT live last Thursday night. And, of course, I was not able to talk about it on Thursday night. And I rewatched it again a few minutes ago just to uh, get what I wanted to say about it. It was very match-heavy. As a matter of fact, it was three matches on the show. Technically four. Yeah, four matches on the show. So that's pretty good for a 50-minute show. Not bad at all. And... This marked the return to Sheamus to NXT, and Sheamus, of course, spent some time in Florida Championship Wrestling, and he did some NXT stuff a while back as well, so Sheamus obviously has a pedigree that does equal to NXT, and that's the reason why he's back on this show, and he's facing off against somebody in the main event, and of course, that person is quickly revealed to be the artiste Aiden English, and immediately I get giddy because I enjoy the prospect of Sheamus against Aiden English. I think that's a great matchup. It's a fresh matchup, and it's a match that would work really well, and I'm going to talk about that somewhat. Now, we started off the show with a squash match featuring my least favorite NXT competitor, Mojo Rawley, taking on Bull Dempsey. Now, this match was really short. It did not, um, it wasn't terrible, but I will say right now that, again, like I said before, WWE, I implore you, sell me on Mojo Rawley because it's just not there for me. I don't care about this guy's football background. Obviously, I don't like football, so I could care less. So, basically, when it comes down to it, I'm not really sold on this guy. Now, granted, he's got charisma from every orifice in his body, straight up. But I will say also that I'm just not endured to the guy at all. I mean, I really don't see much, like, special about him. He's just a former football player. Okay. So... Let's talk about the finish of the match, and um, basically, Raleigh gets nailed with a backdrop suplex, and he ends up going into the three-point stance, and he did some rolls and rolls to the side, basically trying to keep him at bay, and he tackles him into the corner. He whips him in, and of course he gets the big splash, and he hits it twice. And then he hits his version of the rear view, and Hyperdrive finishes him off. Hyperdrive, of course, is the old John Tenta earthquake splash. Or, to be more specific, Hyperdrive is Northern Exposure for WCW fans of the early 90s. The finisher that the late Matt Bourne used to use when he was Big Josh in WCW. It is a seated senton, the earthquake splash. Obviously, Tenta just basically just did not really a jump. He kind of just sat on you, and that was the end. And when it came down to it, Big Josh did the avalanche style, where she leapt up in the air and sat on your chest. That's the version that Mojo Rawley's using. And that's pretty much... Uh, the end of that match, and it was just a squash match to start off the show to get the uh, fans, pun intended, hyped. And Mojo, of course, has his his marks in the crowd, and they're all wearing the Get Hyped, Stay Hyped t-shirts. So, I um, was really curious about uh, how he's going to do when he has longer matches on NXT. He hasn't really had a really long match yet, so I'm really curious to see how he does when he has a longer match against somebody else, somebody that's not, somebody he can just squash, somebody that he has to keep up with. And I think that the Stay Hyped gimmick will, it obviously has got over, 
But like I said, I'm just not sold on the guy yet. I'm just not. This is how it works. So we get Devin Taylor in the back. Of course, she is our interviewer du jour here on NXT. And she's with the suit-wearing CJ Parker. I like Parker now he's gone heel. I think, uh, actually, I hated his fun-loving hippie acts. I didn't like that. I didn't think that it fit for him. I like him better as a heel. An environmentally conscious heel. It's very interesting to say, but it's very true. He basically says that he feels really bad about his loss to Mojo at NXT Arrival. He basically says that his lifestyle will pretty much be the death of him. Like, he's hyped on fast food and... He's the type of guy that would buy 10 burgers and throw the wrappers out the window. And next week, as in in a couple of days, Parker is going to humanly dispose of Mojo Rawley. If only it were that easy, folks. If only it were that easy. I like CJP. I do. I like him as a heel better, like I said, and I like what you can do with him. I think he's good in the ring, too, honestly. And I don't... I think that this... Angle may have some legs, to be totally honest. Maybe not on the surface, but I think it actually could go a little bit. So, I'm uh, watching this, obviously, on the WWE Network on Thursday night, and I see that we're getting Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze, coming out, and I was wondering who he's going to face. Of course, I have no volume, for, for good reason. And because of that, I didn't know that his opponent was going to be Sami Zayn. And I was thinking to myself, immediately, I was like, Tyler Breeze and Sami Zayn, one-on-one, -on -one. yes, I'm sold on this, 100%. Well, the match doesn't even get started because he's basically shaking hands and high-fiving fans around the ringside area, and Corey Graves jumps in from behind and rams him headfirst into the ring post, and then just bombs out, delighted in the trouble he caused. Now, I like the slow burn for the Corey Graves-Sami Zayn feud that we're going to get. I really like the prospect of these two having lots and lots of matches against each other, and the match they had previously was very submission heavy, very, uh, very great submission heavy matchup. I very enjoyed that match a couple weeks ago, and I think that we're going to continue with matches like that, and I also think that we're going to see more of the high-flying style of Sami Zayn as well as the ground and pound of, uh, Corey Graves. So I think that this feud will work really well, and I'm very happy to see it continue. Now, I don't know if they're going to play off the fact that Sami Zayn may have a concussion, potentially. I don't know if they're going to go that direction or not. I know that there is a good possibility they may, given the fact that the doctor was, like, checking over him, he was, like, he had the flashlight in his eyes, making sure his pupils weren't dilated, or I'm not a doctor... I was I played one on television until they killed my character off. But still, for those of you that know me personally, you know what I mean by that. But when it comes down to it, I would say that we're getting a really awesome view between two superstars that can definitely go in the ring. Two superstars that are ne definitely not untested for sure. These are they've been everywhere and done everything, and I'm telling you it's gonna be a great view between two really great up-and-coming stars in NXT. So, I mean, that's pretty much what I'm seeing at this point. I will say that there was a mentioning of uh, next week's NXT, the one that's going to be on this Thursday, you know, two days from today. And there's a show, basically, they are talking about it being themed towards vengeance. And basically, it's kind of a special, I would say it's a special event, so we're going to call it NXT Vengeance. And here are the matches you're going to get. Now, you are going to see feuds pretty much continue. That's basically what it is. It will be Xavier Woods and Tyler Breeze finally going at it. Because obviously they were going to face off an NXT arrival. Alexander Rusev came down and said, Nope, not going to have that match. I'm going to squash you both. So their match is going to happen on Vengeance. And you're going to see Mojo Rawley against CJ Parker on Vengeance. And then the battle between Natalia and Charlotte will finally take place on Vengeance. And finally, 
Bo Dallas gets an opportunity to win back the NXT Championship when he faces off against the man that gravity forgot, Adrian Neville. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be an awesome show, and I'm really looking forward to Vengeance, if that's what we're calling this, I'd say it would be. Vengeance coming up in two days, so yes, very much looking forward to NXT in a couple of days, so that is something definitely to uh, plan for. I'm sure it's going to be an enjoyable occasion. So, basically, we get Devin in the back again. This time she's with Seamus. And Seamus talks about his past, and then Aiden English shows up. That's the first time we've heard of this. And Aiden English basically says that he's using NXT as a stepping stone to the bright lights of Broadway, obviously. So, Seamus talking about how, talking about, well, stones, well, it seems like yours haven't dropped yet, and basically he says, you know what, I'm going to talk to my old buddy JBL, and we're going to get this done, so we're going to have a match tonight, so that's going to be your main event, it's going to be Seamus and the RT stayed in English, so that's cool, I enjoy that. Like I said, a fresh matchup we haven't seen before. We get the Adam Rose experience up next as Adam Rose faces off against Camacho, who ever since Unico became Unicara in uh, WWE, Camacho's been kind of a man without an island, so he's kind of just a mid-card, I can't call him a jobber, I could say he's just kind of a mid-carder just kind of floundering away in NXT lately, so he's facing off against Adam Rose in this show. And we go midway through the match, and Camacho with a hard Irish whip in the corner, and he follows up with a clothesline. And Camacho mocks Adam Rose's prancing and his Adam Rose experience, and he charges in. Adam Rose sees red, basically from the fact that he got his mouth busted open hard way during the match, and he basically just bum-rushes Camacho, starts pounding away at his head, and then he does the snap jabs when he gets back to his vertical base. And a big right hand drops him into the corner. He charges in with a running back elbow in the corner. And he catches him off the buckle with the big spine buster. Finishing him off with the party train. And he nails him with that big giant clothesline. And that's the end of the match. Of course, I love the Adam Rose experience. I love the... Uh, Adam Rose gimmick, and um, you know what, it's really funny to see Adam Rose beat Camacho, who's basically dressed like how Leo Kruger used to dress, which I thought that was funny, and probably a rib, to be totally honest. So, the Adam Rose party has a lot more scantily dressed females this time around, some guy in a morph suit, the guy dressed like a glad Roman gladiator, he's back, and uh, it was really awesome because, like I said, it ain't no party like an Adam Rose party because the Adam Rose party don't stop. So, yes, I'm really excited to see this continue. I love the Adam Rose gimmick, and I'm really interested to see where they go with this. Like I said, this is another reason, along with the Tyler Breeze, I would say this is another major reason to bring in a secondary singles championship to NXT. Like I said, I mean, you had the... FCW 10 title, the one that Seth Rollins basically lorded over. And, you know, like I said, I had done it on my 2K14 season and made the Internet Championship into an NXT title. I think there needs to be an NXT Championship. Maybe you can take the, uh, the television championship. Since NXT is now on the WWE Network, technically it's on television... So, I would say, why don't you do a TV championship for NXT, and that would be your secondary title. We do a tournament for it over the summer, crown the new champion, and that person immediately can be just like how the Intercontinental Championship should be still in WWE, the number one contender to the NXT Championship. I think that's a good idea. I think that's the right direction to go. So we get our next match. It is the boss, Sasha Banks, of course, with Charlotte at ringside and Summer Rae on a steak. And facing off against uh, the nurse of Hugonomics, Bailey. Of course, Natalia is in her corner. So this match, it went pretty good, actually. It was a good match. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy Bailey a lot. I think Bailey's got a 
nice upswing, to be totally honest. I haven't been completely sold on Sasha Banks. I don't know why she's using the catfight punches, but I just I guess that's how her gimmick works. She is the boss, after all. We go to the end of the match, and there's a big whip into the corner, and basically she telegraphs the drop kick of Bailey, and then she goes for a missile drop kick, which misses. Sasha grabs Bailey, tosses her through the ring, and through the ring. Wow. That was power. Tossed her through the middle rope and to the floor. And, of course, Charlotte went to go take advantage. Natalia's there to stop that from happening. And Charlotte jumps Natty. And this allows for her to get distracted. And Sasha tries to roll up Bailey from behind. Bailey counters with a roll up of her own. Sloppy as it is, still got the three count. So, Bailey wins and continues the feud with the BFFs, and there is some sort of results I've seen over the weekend that there may be a new member of the BFFs, given the fact that Summer Rae is pretty much full-time in WWE now. I would think that they're going to bring someone else in, probably one of the various NXT women that I have not seen yet, and not even known of their existence. I mean, there are a lot of women in NXT that I've never heard of before that I've seen on the roster page. I'm like, who the, who's this person? I have no idea who this person is. So that's probably what we had. Our main event time happens, and the artiste, Aiden English, comes out. He's putting himself over like he always does, and here comes Seamus to the ring. And Seamus has got a microphone. He says, you know what? A lot of people seem to know me. And, of course, Aiden English uses this time to remind Sheamus he's going to use the WWE as a stepping stone to the bright lights of Broadway. Well, Sheamus asks the crowd if Aiden English will make it to Broadway. Of course, they say no. And then the fans say basically no again when Sheamus asks if he should sing himself. And Sheamus is like, okay, fine, I'm still going to do it anyway. So, well... In Ireland, we like to celebrate, so I need you to clap along, and he sings the Irish Rover, which, of course, people would know, like, other people have covered it throughout history, obviously, the Pogues, and the Dubliners, and Dropkick Murphys, and pretty much any Celtic or Irish rock band you will find out there, including Epcot's own Off Kilter have done a version of the Irish Rover. And Seamus is about to complete the first stanza of lines, and sure enough, he gets jumped at the bell by Aiden English when he's basically trying to sing. And of course, this makes Seamus infuriated. He wants to sing his last lines, and Aiden English jumps him. The bell finally sounds, and we go uh, midway through this match. Seamus goes to the top, and he gets caught with a neck breaker off the top from Aiden English. It was awesome, by the way. It looked great, and I was very surprised it happened. Makes cover one, two, and Seamus kicks out. Locks a chin lock in the center of the ring. This was basically chin lock central for Aiden English in this match, to be totally honest. Seamus fought back up to his feet, and this time he gets dropped again. The chin lock, this time he jumps up on the back, so he's trying to choke out Seamus at any means necessary. Seamus goes down, he's down to one knee, and he's about to fade, about to fade, and then he rises up, and he breaks the hold, and Seamus charges Aiden English in the corner, and he hits the axe handle, and the axe handle, and the charging shoulder in the corner, and a high running knee, Aiden ducks the shot, and he hits the ropes, gets ran over with the tilt-a-whirl slam, mm, excuse me, and Brogue kick out of the corner, one, two, three, and Sheamus wins. So big win for Sheamus. Uh, the win was never in question. But it was cool to see how Aiden English got to hang with the former WWE champion. I will say that I like this match. I like this match a lot, and I like to see more between these two. And once Aiden English gets brought up to the main roster, I think that's probably going to be a long time before that happens. But I do think it'll happen eventually, and once it does, I'd like to see these two face off again. Because they put on a great match in NXT, and I know they could put on a great match in the WWE. So, like I said, that was NXT. Like I said, very match-heavy. 
it, like I said, a little bit different this time around of my review, my recap. Uh, Raw is coming up tomorrow, and like I said, we're going to flip-flop it because NXT is usually Wednesday, but it's going to be today because obviously I had to do the thing that was the shortest because I wanted to make sure I got the video out before midnight, and I still think I'm going to have an issue with that. But this is the video for Tuesday. So tomorrow, like I said, we're going to talk Monday Night Raw and Thursday. I don't know what's going on Thursday. I guess we'll figure it out when we get there. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. So... As always, if you like these videos, tell your friends about them, leave a comment, do subscribe, and help spread the word about Pop. If you'd like to, like our Facebook fan page, it's Zero and Disney Pop. If you'd like to be my friend on Facebook, it's Owen Disney. If you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Zero and Disney. Last but certainly not least, I want to send your thoughts, comments, queries, and opinions. If you have things you want me to talk about NXT related, just let me know. If you have ideas for matches, you want to talk WrestleMania, we can do that. Or if you want to talk Disney or Universal or Halloween Horror Night specifically, just you want to get a hold of me. Or if you want to be a podcaster and if you want to help spread the word about this podcaster revolution by putting your own content here on Pop, you're more than welcome to send me an email at surrowanddisney at gmail.com. In the meantime, thank you guys and girls out there for watching. And until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all i got to say about that.